Hello and welcome back to another Blender tutorial. Today we will explore 3D printing including Blender, Cura and Ender3 or Ender3 Pro. I will first uh, talk a bit about scale and units. Then we will model a simple plant pot as our first exercise. Then we will export the file as an STL file, which then be translated into machine language in Cura, and then we print it. Then we print the pot, the plant pot. <coughs> so what's what's important to to know is that when we talk about units, then the default unit system of Blender is the metric system and the unit scale is one meter um, meaning that the value one means one meter <coughs> it's important because when we print things when we export the STL file and open it in Cura so Cura uses a unit scale it also uses a metric system but it uses a unit scale of millimeter if we so if we add a cube, the cube normally has a dimensions of 2 times 2 times 2 meter. That's the default size of the cube. In Cura, Cura doesn't care about the meter, it only cares about the value, meaning that 2 means 2 millimeter. So in order to make a, a plant pot, for example, with a diameter of 40 millimeter, the unit needs to be 40. cube with 40 times 40 times 40 meter. The problem with this is that if you zoom out you run into the problem of the clipping plane which you can you could adjust but I prefer to work with real sizes so I want to work um, with my plant pot which I, I will create later in a real size so if my diameter is 40 millimeter sorry my radius if my radius is 40 millimeter then it would mean it's 0 0.08 meter a cylinder yeah the problem now is that Kura would understand this as 0 0.08 millimeter how we can change that we can change it when we export when we export our model to export export STL then we can actually change the scale in that case I would need to change it to 1000 that would give me the correct size in Cora another thing which is important to keep in mind is the that the, tra the translation or the, the transformation of an object need to be always applied to the object always try to do especially when you run into problems where you think all these dimensions don't seem correct especially when when you use uh, modifiers later uh, thickness modifier for example the thickness modifier still thinks you haven't yet scaled it and then it creates kind of weird results so now when I now I have scaled it down scaled down this object I would apply that scale and normally all transformations to make sure that everything is applied so that means now um, now I shouldn't run in any troubles later on okay but I want to start my pot with a cube actually so I will delete this and bring, bring my um, my 3D cursor back to zero. Then I add a cube. You can also change the size here. I want to have a planter with about. 100 mil width, that should be fine now. Um, 
Now I want to have the origin on the bottom of the of the pot, so I go into edit mode and here I use increment snapping to increments. Push that up so my the original is in the center. Subdivision modifier. Let's go back here. I change the shade to smooth, and uh, I like to keep. I want to see the the cage of my basically the shape of the of the form before before the subdivision kicks in. So you, you could also show it like this. But it feels for me harder to work with it. Um, so this is going uh, to be a very simple plant pot. I just need to check something here. I feel like there are almost too many subdivisions here. Yeah, that looks better. I go to um, X-ray selection. That means I can, if I select here something in front it also selects all the points in the back whereas if this is off then only select the ones in front then with O I can turn on my proportional editing I will use sharp. So if you want to change um, Clipping, the clipping plane you can also so you can zoom in much more closer. Um, now that looks already quite good, but I want, a bit, I want to have it a bit more, a slightly more artistic, and we will also need a hole in the bottom to drain water. Okay, we'll just subdivide this. And then this one. I just need a tiny, tiny hole. Now I want to add a bit more interest to it. So it looks almost like a flower bulb. Another thing I want to change is have the top straight, so I don't like this. Select my all my upper vertices and with scale C and the zero I can make it flat. Now it feels like I lost a bit the 
No. I don't like that. So I want to change that. Yeah, I like that much better. So now, now we need to add thickness. First, I'm gonna apply all the transformations, and then I will add a solidifier. So yes, thickness is important to consider correctly because the 3D printer, my 3D printer, uses uh, nozzles and the nozzles have a certain size. I use, currently I'm using 0.6 millimeter. There is all kinds of thicknesses from, from 0.1 to 1 millimeter. So that's the nozzle size. And if you thinking about a thickness, ideally 0.6 would be the minimum. The planter would need to have a bit of a substance. So I would add, let's say, about 5 or 6 layers. So that means 0.6 times 6 would be uh, 3.5. Uh, uh, 3.6 millimeter. That sounds a bit too much. So the next step down would be uh, 3 millimeter. Let's see how that looks like. The next lower thickness would be 0 0.0024. Almost looks better. So now. So I added thickness outside of the skin because if I would add it inside it would uh, overlap in these corners here. So I can show you that. That would overlap, which is not nice. So that also means that I want to adjust the bottom position. So edit mode, select everything and move upwards G, Z and then 0.04. Go back into object mode. I want to apply the subdivisions first and then the solidifier because I don't want to have I want to have my subdivision applied on the solidifier. It's not what I want. I want to maintain the thickness on top. So it looks pretty good. Now I need to export. It's already selected. So I just go here, export, STL, port design, scale. I need to change the scale and select on selection only. Y is forward, C is up. Now we can go into Kura. So in Kura, you may need to make sure that you have selected the 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 right nozzle size, and then in the settings, I'm I like to use the export mode because I have the full control over all aspects and and how the printer will behave. Now I open my file. Top design 01 open here it is in the right size okay now the settings I use actually the, the, the settings which the standard profile uses that gives me quite a good result um, the layer height 0 0.2 works perfect line width is 0 0.6 as the nozzle size wall thickness it can we could lower this too then the seam alignment the seam seam alignment i like to use random what this does is that whenever the the printer jumps to a new layer it will start from a different point otherwise it would create otherwise it would start always on the same spot which creates a, 
ugly um, scene. In that case, you could also probably use the, the scene, the seam aligned shortest or the, the sharpest corner, which would make the seam here probably. Anyway, I, let's try the random alignment. That's all fine. Infill, the density of the infill, 20%. That's also good. Material, I need normally the default would be 200 for my printer it works better with 220 that's the temperature i'm going for and able retraction this is important the retraction basically pulls the filament back when the printer jumps from one position to another one i keep the speeds as suggested because the speed although yeah you can maximize the speed but I, I never get really good result i keep the speed as it is support i won't use support here in this model but if you have any overhanging bits then support is needed if they are larger if they have a certain size there are two different options one is experimental tree support which saves you material often but it doesn't work always that great but it, i had really good results already with this as well so i am using an ender free pro that maybe has if you use another printer then of course your settings might be different but you can start with the settings i'm using and then try to adjust it to your printer now i can yeah i can now slice it it will take a few seconds If the model is very complex, something takes longer. Okay, tells me it will take eight hours. It's okay. Let's hopefully it's a good quality. So. Print is turned on. Here the red, red button. Then I put the SD card in. And After eight hours, 
and it took quite long and I think the problem was that it had to jump between these peaks here quite a lot so I might change that in the next in the next model otherwise it looks quite good it has a bit of uh, it's a bit hairy but otherwise quite nice so you see you can see the small dots this is where this is where the filament starts a new layer randomly the bottom is not great so I in the next round I will just make it flat I'll just make a flat bottom I could have used a support here that, that might have changed it okay, otherwise not bad.